Hello YouTube, it's Danny Don't Go In 237 and I uh, haven't made a video in a while, I've been hellishly busy um, so I'm sorry about that, I'm going to try to get back into the habit um, One of the reasons I've been so busy is because the uh, last two months in a row I've uh, had two different horror conventions to go to, I live in the uh, New Jersey area so there's a uh, quite a few conventions that come around here, but the two biggest ones are um, Monster Mania, which is down in uh, Cherry Hill near Philadelphia, and then there's also one uh, closer to where I live um, in Parsippany, New Jersey, which is called Chiller Theater. And um, so those two took up uh, a bit of time, and uh, I uh, had to save a little bit of money to go to both of those shows. And uh, Picked up some Blu-rays, got a few autographs, uh, all of which I'm going to show you. So I'll start with uh, stuff that I picked up because I, li I like this movie. I don't think it's a phenomenal or amazing movie the way some people do. But I also didn't hate it the way some people do. And that's Prometheus. Um, I went to see this when it came out. I saw it in 3D. I actually didn't want to see it in 3D. I wanted to see it flat, but um, I accidentally went to a 3D showing, and when they handed me the glasses, I was like, oh, I thought this was flat, but um, I found the 3D was actually very not um, non-disruptive um, and non-distracting. I didn't think it really added anything to the movie, except for a couple of shots, which were kind of neat, but overall, um, uh, I like this movie. I think it's basically, uh, I've, uh, I've called it in the past, the most expensive, low-budget alien ripoff ever made. I think this is more a remake of Galaxy of Terror, or uh, Forbidden World, or one of those cheap, gory, alien uh, knockoffs, than it is actually a uh, sequel, prequel, companion piece to Alien. Uh, this movie I find to be basically just the most expensive gross-out movie ever made. It seems to, uh, the most, the, the top priority of this movie seems to be to be as disgusting as possible. And it succeeds. It's, uh, it's got some pretty vile stuff in it. But, uh, it's neat. It's a fun movie. And, um, uh, I like it. I really like, uh, Numi Rapice. Is that how you pronounce her name? And, um, Michael Fassbender. I really like both of them. So, uh, you know, I like the movie. I don't think it's amazing, but... I think it's good. Um, I picked up a couple of uh, Shout Factory titles, or as they call it, Scream Factory, when they release their horror titles. And one I got is Piranha. Uh, big fan of Roger Corman. Uh, big fan of Joe Dante. So this is a uh, no-brainer. Uh, my wife loves this movie even more than I do, though. She loves the noise the piranhas make. Um, but yeah, I like this movie a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. It's uh, kind of just a nasty, tasteless little horror movie with some great, uh, great special effects, great gore effects, and um, really nice uh, kind of, um, I don't know how else to put it, kind of mischievous atmosphere, um, kind of similar atmosphere to um, The Howling and Gremlins before uh, Joe Dante. I think this movie's got kind of... Um, lost something later on. They got a little, um, I don't know if, if, um, sappy is the right word, but, uh, they, they, yeah, they did, they lost a little bit of their, um, lost a little bit of their sarcastic edge, I think, as they went along. And then I bought They Live, which is a great movie. It's another one I saw this when it first came out. Um, and uh, I love this little buy <laughs> uh, thing on the uh, on the outside uh, outside slipcase. I think that's really cool. I also what I also like about Shout Factory is the fact that you can you know flip the inner artwork around because I really love this um, this original poster art. I think it's really cool. So this is a great movie, a great uh, great political satire as well as just being a great sci-fi action comedy uh, the, however you want to take it but um it's very clever it's a lot of fun roddy piper not the best actor in the world but he uh he has a lot of enthusiasm but uh keith david is great in this movie too so it's uh it's just 
just really great classic cult cult movie. Uh, but my second Arrow video, I've been wanting to get this for a while, The Beyond. Uh, great Lucio Fulci movie. Uh, it's amazing that the um, this movie it looks so crystal clear. It looks so it's so beautifully restored that it actually shows more than ever the seams and the makeup. You know, you can see, you can tell that you're looking at, you know, just plaster and latex and fake blood being pulled apart and everything. Um, but somehow it still manages to be gross. <laughs> you know, the scene where the guy gets uh, his face ripped apart by the fake tarantulas is just as disgusting, even if, even if it looks even more fake than it ever has. Just the whole concept of it is so gross and, and icky that uh, it really works. And this just comes chock full of... This has got so much stuff in it. It's amazing. I actually had... It came with a... Um, I found it came with a, a catalog for other Arrow titles. And I found out one, once I had opened this and took everything out, I could not get everything back in and get this closed. It wouldn't close. So um, I took the catalog out. I figured I don't need that in there. But yeah, but it comes with, comes with a booklet. Really cool booklet. Um... Which unfortunately has a um, part of it written by Eli Roth, who I uh, his uh, his whole style of writing and talking I find to be really irritating, um, and a great poster which I'm not going to unfold right now. I'm sure everybody who's watching this has seen uh, has seen this edition. I'm not showing you anything you haven't seen before, but uh, it's really cool. It's got some great extras on it. But yeah, I'm ex I'm excited to have it. I've been meaning to get this for a long time. And I love that. I love that commissioned art. I think that's beautiful. So that's that. Got a couple of criterions. Not at uh, not at the show. I uh, actually um, this was on sale uh, at Amazon. Uh, so I got myself Rosemary's Baby. It's one of the best horror movies ever made. Um, I find this movie, the thing I find most amazing about this movie is the fact that I find it to be scarier the second or third time you watch it. There's moments in it that you don't realize how frightening they are until you think back on it. And um, a couple of examples without giving any spoilers. At the very beginning, there's a scene where they're being shown around the apartment. Mia Farrow and John Ketsbedi is being shown around the apartment by Elijah Cook. And Elijah Cook um, notices that a bureau, big, huge, gigantic bureau, has been pushed into the closet. And they don't know, understand why. And when they move it out of the closet, they realize that there's a door that leads to the next apartment. Um, and again, that's just kind of an odd, weird moment uh, at first. But when you think about later why the old lady who lived there before moved... <laughs> the uh bureau uh you um it, it's very creepy and then there's another great a great moment it's just a very brief little moment that's very easy to miss when um they're having uh dinner at uh, Ruth Gordon and I cannot remember the actor's name and, and Ruth Gordon's husband's apartment and Ruth Gordon and Mia Farrow are doing the dishes and John Cassavetes and and uh Roman uh Castavet are uh, talking and uh, they, uh, Mia Farrow and Ruth Gordon come back in the room, and just for just, just a second, you see this look of complete astonishment on John Cassavetti's face before he sort of composes himself. It's a great, creepy moment. Um, it's just a wonderful movie. It's one of Roman Polanski's best movies. And um, yeah, I love it. I've been wanting to get this for a while, too. And now I have it. Oh. And this one was a gift from my brother. I've been wanting to pick it up. But, uh, Naked Lunch. My brother actually bought a copy of this for himself. And he said that he felt that, uh, the universe was, uh, out of balance if I didn't have a copy too. So he bought a, bought a second copy and sent it to me. So I really appreciate that. This is a wonderful movie. I think I've already talked about it in my, uh, one of my previous Criterion, uh, because I had the, I had the two-disc, uh, DVD edition of this, but... It's just a movie about 
I mean, it's a movie about drug addiction. It's a movie about hallucinations. It's a movie about uh, paranoia. But it's ultimately, it's, it's a movie about writing. It's a movie about uh, the, the painstaking process of writing. Which, uh, you know, I'm uh, attempting to be a screenwriter, and I've probably about got, got about 25 unfinished scripts <laughs> that I've been working on, you know, whenever I uh, get the energy to. It's not easy. It's, uh, it's a pain in the ass. But um, this movie captures that. Absolutely. Brilliant movie with some amazing imagery. And then we're going to slowly segue now onto the autographs, because I've got a few autographed Blu-rays or DVD to go to uh, before I get into just the autographs. Um, got myself the Basket Case Trilogy, and uh, Kevin Van Hentenrick was signing this at his table at Chiller, and he was nice enough to sign it for me. And he wrote... When you open, when you lift the lid, you die. Um, super nice guy. I mean, he sat there and talked to me for about 20 minutes. Um, but I love Basket Case. This is one of my favorite horror movies. It's like, uh, it's like the ultimate Times Square sleaze <laughs> grindhouse movie. Um, it's just so sordid and so sleazy and so surreal and so grimy. I don't know if another movie captures... The exception maybe of Taxi Driver. <laughs> I don't know if another movie captures just the the way uh, Times Square, Forty Second Street, New York in the late seventies, early eighties just oozed sleaze uh, at that time. And this movie just it's like a time capsule to that uh, that uh, period of time. Plus, it's a great horror movie with some really bizarre special effects, some really weird uh, stop-motion animation, uh, a really wicked sense of humor, uh, but at the same time it's uh, it's very dark, it's very tragic. Um, it's a very intelligent horror movie, and I, um, Basket Case 2 I like a lot as well. It's not as good as the first one, but I like it. And I gotta tell you, I've never seen Basket Case 3, so uh, maybe I'll do an actual review of this at some point. I'm kind of excited to revisit these and visit one I haven't seen yet. This one I have shown twice in uh, previous videos, but I have to show it again uh, because now not only is my Blood for Dracula autographed by Paul Morrissey and Stefania Cassini, but it is also signed by Udo Kier, which is really exciting. He was a super nice guy. He was a really nice guy. Um, um, yeah, it was very exciting to meet him. And uh, we just chatted about nothing, really. I find myself, when I meet celebrities, I don't exactly get starstruck, usually. Uh, but every once in a while, there's an exception. And uh, he was definitely one of them. <laughs> I had a hard time uh, thinking of anything intelligent to say. So I just kind of did the usual, oh, how long are you in town? And Oh, you ever been to New Jersey before? You know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, really fascinating questions there I came up with. All right, so now we're going to just move into the uh, autographs. I have um, a lot of autographed items. Not a ton. I'm not, I'm not a huge autograph guy, but I do, I do like getting autographs occasionally. Um, so maybe I'll do a video on that at some point as well. But uh, one of my favorite movies is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. My favorite character in the Rocky Horror Picture Show is Columbia, because I think Little Nell was just uh, the incredibly, uh, one of the most incredibly cute, people ever to be in a movie or on screen and uh, she was a chiller and I met her and I was going to get a um, I was going to get an 8x10 uh, signed by um, uh, of her as Columbia but when I saw this one I was like oh my god no I gotta get that one that's gorgeous so she wrote yes my first name is Justin and she wrote to Juicy Justin <laughs> and again I was uh I was starstruck. I couldn't say anything. I think I managed to get, like, uh, out. And that was about it, so. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a suave guy. And then, uh, Kevin Van Hentenrick was nice enough to throw in an 8x10 with the DVD for free. And, uh, this is to, uh, to me and my wife. Uh, because my wife loves Basket Case as well. And he, uh, he wrote, uh, a true basket case couple, which is very nice. And then finally, 
I am not ashamed to admit it. I am a Debbie Gibson fan. I have been since I was in high school. Um, uh, I always liked her music. I always found it to be very entertaining. She wrote and produced her own stuff. And uh, she was both, uh, pretty cute. And then for many years I kind of forgot about her and wasn't listening to her. And then she uh, went and did a Playboy spread and got my attention all over again. So um, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of three issues of Playboy I own. Um, well, I should say my wife and I own. Uh, this one, because of Debbie Gibson, we also own the ones uh, with uh, Tiffany and Drew Barrymore. So basically, you know, 80s, you know, teen stars we, uh, <laughs> who did Playboy spreads later in their life we uh, find um, interesting. So uh, she asked if me, oh, do you want me to sign the cover? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I can avoid having to look at Paris Hilton, I'll, uh, I'll um, do that. But the, uh, I think I can show the, the picture that she uh, signed here. You can see her butt, but she's wearing a thong. To Justin, you rock. No, Debbie, you rock. So, um, it was cool. It was cool to meet her. She looks great. She was very sweet. And um, I just think this is so surreal. <laughs> if I, uh, if you gave me a list of like, you know, you know, name ten people, name uh, ten eighty singers who might uh, do a Playboy spread, uh, I'd say that she would probably not even have made the list. So it's uh, pretty off the wall. So that's it. That's everything. Um, not a very exciting video, but I haven't done one in a while, and I felt I should just do something to try to get back in the habit of it. Um, and uh, I still have to do a uh, second entry in my uh, series, I promised, of the uh, first time I ever saw. Uh, I already did Night of the Living Dead. Um, and um, uh, the next one I'm going to do, I will try and shoot within the next couple of days. And uh, I'm going to talk about the first time I ever saw E.T. So that's a little different. But I think it's a nice story. I think so, anyway. So, I hope everybody has a good night. Or whatever time it is you're watching this. And, uh... Happy almost summer. Uh... It was, uh, really beautiful a couple of days ago. It was in the, uh... The upper 60s and 70s, and now it's gone back down into the 50s and 40s. So we just planted a garden in our backyard. Now I'm hoping all the uh, plants don't die with the sudden chilliness. So what are you going to do? Not much you can do. That's Mother Nature, right? So take care. See everybody later. Bye.